and we're ready to boot this thing for the first time. Um, now I know it'll at least power on because when I plugged it in it, it started to turn on but I wanted to turn it off right away so this is going to be a true first test so here we go everybody try to get into the BIOS if something comes up oh look at that 16 megabyte Voodoo 3 card Okay, that is that. That's that um, ID uh, card. It's an Ultra 100 card, which I'll probably wind up taking out because it'll. I'll never wind up using it in this system. I did put the Windows Millennium disc in. Let's let's see if it'll boot right from that. Oh, there we go. All right, we can do this now. I, I, as long as it booted from the disc, I, I'm pretty sure everything's going to be okay in the BIOS. So we want to start this computer with CD-ROM support. Let's go to found my two drives. Now I have two optical drives and then the two hard drives. So we'll see what we can do here. I'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to set you guys on the tripod. All right, now that I got you guys on the tripod, first thing we're going to do is go into F disk. And yes, we want to enable large disk support because both of these drives are over 2 gigabytes. Uh, should NTFS partition be treated as large? Yes. These had uh, NTFS partitions because I think both these hard drives were running Windows XP or Windows 2000. Um, so that's okay. We're going to go ahead and delete those now. But the first thing I want to do is display, so I'll hit number four, the current partition. Uh, the current partition on drive one is NTFS and that's the 20 gigabyte drive. It shows slightly less because you never got the full 20. So we'll hit escape, and I'll hit number three for delete, and we're going to go to number four because NTFS is a non-DOS partition. So we'll hit number four and enter. Uh, it's warning me that data will be lost. That's fine, so we'll hit enter again. Do I want to continue? Y for yes, and then enter. There we go. Now, this drive has no partition. What I'm going to do next is hit number 5 because I need to change to the second drive that's on there. And we'll bring, go to number 2. And we're going to go ahead and display and see what's on this drive. Okay, another NTFS partition. So I'll hit escape. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to hit number 3 to delete the partition. And number 4 to delete the non-DOS partition. Yes, I'm sure and Y for yes. Now at this point I just need to change back so I'll go to number five to drive one and hit enter. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a DOS partition. So I'll hit enter and this one is going to be a primary DOS partition so I'll hit enter again. Now what it's going to do is verify the uh, drive. Now, I won't make you guys watch this. It's going to take a little while, but I'm going to do the same thing with the um, second drive, but I'm going to make that an extended partition and then assign that uh, drive letter D, so that's going to be a logical drive. So, be back in just a couple of minutes. Okay, now it's asking me, do I want to use the maximum available size for this partition? Since I'm not going to be loading multiple operating systems, I'm going to go ahead and say yes, so just hit enter and then it's going to verify the drive's integrity once again. Alright, primary DOS partition has been created for drive 1. So I'm going to hit escape. Now I have to change it, so we're going to go back to 5. I've changed it to drive number 2. Now for drive number 2, we're going to go ahead and create and let's see, I believe it's an extended DOS partition. Okay, now it's asking me um, what size do I want the extended DOS partition to be. Um, you could change, you could make 
uh, three or four different partitions if you wanted to for uh, different various reasons. Maybe if you want to install multiple operating systems or you wanted different drives to store your games or something. But in this case, because I'm, I just need the one drive, or in this case two, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at the maximum, which is the 29, two, uh, 29 gigabytes and some change. So go ahead and just hit enter here. Alright, now it has created the extended DOS partition. Now it's going to ask me to make a logical drive for that extended DOS partition. Alright, here's where it asks me to give a size to the logical drive for the extended DOS partition. Again, I'm just going to use the full size, but if you wanted to, you could break it up as pretty much as much as you wanted to. I think you can have up to 10 partitions in this case, so we're going to hit enter just to use the entire amount. And there we go. So we are done. All available space in the extended partitions assigned to the logical drive. So we'll go ahead and escape, and we'll escape out of FDisk. And one more time, because we do have to restart the computer for the changes to take effect. Alright, now that the system is uh, booted back up again, uh, the very last thing to do before we install the operating system is to format the two drives. So I'm going to start with the C drive, so we're going to type format C colon and hit enter. And now it's going to ask me, am I sure I want to do it? I'm going to go ahead and say yes and hit enter one more time and now it's formatting the drive. So this is going to take probably, I'd say a good 10 to 15 minutes to do both drives. So once that's done, we'll go ahead and start installing the operating system. Alright, now that we have both drives formatted we're ready to go ahead and install. Um, we go ahead and ready to install Windows Millennium. So all I need to do is type setup because we're already at the A prompt, which is the CD-ROM in this case. And we'll go ahead and hit enter. Um, it's just who wants to do a routine check, so I'll say I'll hit enter. Say yes. Let's go run a quick scan disk just to make sure there are no errors on the drives. Do the C drive first, and now the D. Nope. Didn't find any errors, so I don't need to view the log, so we'll hit X for the exit. And now it should boot into the installer. And here we are, Windows Millennium Edition Setup. Alright, congratulations on choosing Windows Millennium Edition. Tells you a bunch of things. Setup will take 30 to 60 minutes. So we'll go ahead and click Next. Uh, yes, I'll use the recommended directory, which is C colon Windows. Now it's checking for, uh, make sure, basically make sure we have enough hard drive space, which we have plenty. And the first thing it did was check for uh, normal components. Alright, now here's the options that we have. Um, we can do a typical installation, portable, which is for uh, laptops or portable computers a compact to save disk space or a custom. In this case we're going to do a custom because I want to see what I'm installing. You click custom then we'll go next. Let's see. We'll keep those. I want desktop wallpaper and I want mouse pointers. That's good, that's good. I want desktop themes, games I want. I need multi. Uh, no, I don't need multi-language support. Let's see what they have in multimedia. Yes, I want all the sample stuff because the sound sample sounds really cool in Millennium. Don't don't need Outlook Express. Don't need online services. Uh, system tools. 
I need the clipboard, I want the character map, and I want the system monitor, and we'll do NetWatcher. Alright, that should be it. So it's telling me I'm going to need 592 megabytes of space. I think we can spare it. We'll click Next. Give this computer a name. We're going to call it Gateway. Gateway AMD. And I'll put HV at the end for Hampton, Virginia. Uh, we'll keep it on the work group. Uh, computer description. It's an AMD Athlon 1 gigahertz. So 1000 megahertz. And we'll click next. Uh, yep, we want the regular English, the American version. So United States. Uh, keyboard layout. Yep, 101. Our time zone here is Eastern, and we'll have it automatically do the daylight savings time, though I don't think it's really going to work properly. Okay, now here's where it wants me to create a disk, and I actually am going to do that. I just have to go grab the disk. That one right here. Okay. Go ahead and insert it into the floppy drive because this will give me a chance to actually test this newly installed floppy drive. And we'll go ahead and click OK to continue. Okay. Looks like we got a disk error. We'll try it again. Okay, I think I know what the problem is. It's it's looking at the A drive, which is usually the floppy drive, but in this case it's being used as the uh, optical drive or the DVD drive. So I won't be able to make it now, but I will once we be able to, once we install the operating system. So we'll cancel for now. Right. And click OK. Begin copying files. Yep, we're all done doing the actual uh, man portion of the setup. I'm going to click Finish. And now the computer is going to do its thing. It says it's going to take about 24 minutes. So once that's completed, we'll be back. All right. It appears uh, Windows is ready to uh, restart. Uh, remove all disks from floppy drive and click OK. So that's what we're going to do. And I'll just click restart now to get it going quicker. I'm really pleased to see that it has a Voodoo 3 uh, video card in it. Those are kind of rare nowadays. And um, I'm really interested to see how it how the games work on it. I'll probably do some gaming videos once this installation's completed. Uh, let me know if you guys are interested in that. Okay, now it's starting from the disk again. Uh, let me see. Okay, you know what? We're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to take the uh, CD out and restart it because it's just gonna keep booting from the disk. Fortunately, it doesn't give you an option to boot from the hard drive like some modern operating systems do. So what I'll do is once it starts loading Windows, I'll just stick the uh, CD back in. And if you guys are wondering where I got um, Windows Millennium for this, it's just from a torrent that I got online. I just burned it to a disk. And here we go, Windows Millennium Edition. The infamous Windows Millennium Edition. Really wasn't as bad as everybody made it out to be. The main problem was with the system resources. Uh, Windows couldn't uh, manage them properly, so unlike most operating systems where you can leave the computer running for days at a time, even months, 
Windows Millennium, you had to at least restart it, maybe like, at least with me it was about once every week or so, because you'd actually run out of system resources. But other than that, I always found it to be a pretty stable operating system. Okay, here's where it's uh, setting up the hardware. I'll go through this, and uh, once this part complete is completed, I'll show you what the uh, desktop looks like. All right, here's where it's asking for my username or my name. I always put Cool Cat, which is uh, something I call myself. It's a handle, my old CB handle. And then for company, I always just put Home. Next. You always have to agree to the terms. Okay, I'm going to put the product key in and we'll be right back. Alright, now that I put the product key in, it's going to have to restart one more time. Alright, here we are at the uh, first screen. This is the Enter Windows Password screen. I am going to put my username in there. But I'm not going to enter a password because I don't want to have to do that every time I log in. Put the username and I'll hit OK. And Melissa Millennium will finish the very few last steps. I love that drum that they used back then to show that there was actually activity. I thought that was really cool. I think they did that uh, Windows 98 and Millennium. I don't believe Windows 95 had that. Should be coming up any second. It doesn't. It doesn't appear that the video driver installed, but that's okay because this is pretty much stock. I should be able to get all that stuff off of uh, Gateway's website. And yes, believe it or not, they will still have uh, drivers for an operating system this old. And there we are, Windows Millennium Edition. Let's go into uh, properties. Athlon processor with 768 megabytes of RAM. I don't even think that was uh, available in systems when this operating system came out. Let's see what uh, we're missing in Device Manager. Oh yeah, quite a bit. We're missing the Ethernet. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. That might be the modem. Uh, storage device, which is probably like a SM bus driver. And the audio card driver. It also appears there's a problem with that uh, USB hub, but we'll see. And of course we're missing the uh, video driver, so we're missing quite a few drivers. But I'll still call this a successful installation. It appears Windows is working. We'll go into uh, my computer, see if it's recognizing all the drives. And it appears to be you got the floppy drive right there, the 20 gig C drive, 30 gig D drive, the E and F drive. So yes, I'm gonna call this a successful installation of Windows Millennium Edition. I'm gonna have to stop the video here because I am steadily running out of tape. Um, this is part two. There may be a part three. Probably part three. I'm gonna combine with a uh, game review. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more videos coming really soon. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.